Italian uh, Angela Carini in which um, the first punch dislodged Carini's chin strap, a second smashed against her chin and blooded her shorts. After multiple punches, she returned to her corner and raised her hand, fell to her knees sobbing and refused to shake Carini's hand after the Algerian was declared the winner. And The Guardian also says the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls has expressed her concern. Angela Carini rightly followed her instinct, she says, prioritised her physical safety, but she and other female athletes should not be exposed to this. 17 minutes to 7, our main headline this morning. President Joe Biden has greeted three American detainees on their return to the US from Russia, part of the largest east-west prisoner swap since the Cold War. Venezuela's banned opposition leader, Maria Corina Machado, has called for protests across the country to defend what her party sees as its rightful electoral victory. President Maduro has ordered the Supreme Court to take action against the protesters. There have been more than a thousand arrests already uh, and called for the opposition leader to be arrested too. From Caracas, here's our Southern South America correspondent, Amy Wells. <laughs> The protests were something incredible. Everyone has the internet, Wi-Fi, Instagram, TikTok. Everyone passed on a statement through the neighborhoods of Caracas saying, let's march, let's join together for a good Venezuela. Isabella, not her real name, is one of dozens of families waiting for answers outside this police station in Caracas. The neighborhoods of Caracas began to descend from the mountain. When the petaras loomed, they started to go down, shouting with cords, hands, or flags. Barefoot children, mothers, carrying children to the march. The armored paramilitaries of Maduro supporters yelled at us, cursed us, threw stone at us. They told us, Viva Maduro. We went out to march. We want a change because we can no longer stand this government. There is so much misery, so much hunger, so much crime, so much injustice towards innocent people. The National Guard grabbed my son unjustly because he was not harming anyone. My son did not have stones, did not have weapons, he only protested. They beat him. They accused him of being a terrorist for defending their country, for wanting a change. Her son, one of hundreds of people detained in protests against President Maduro. I haven't been able to see him or pass him through. I can even hand him his clothes. I don't know if he has been beaten. I don't know if he has bathed, if he has eaten, if they have given him food. They don't give me information about anything. They have no evidence of anything. Isabella cries, and she outlines why her family, and so many others, felt the need to protest. We want a future for our children, for our grandchildren, for the entire country. There is so much misery, many people eating in the streets, many people dying in hospitals. I had a granddaughter who died on 6th December last year because there was no oxygen in the hospitals. There were 12 children who died because there was no oxygen. I want Venezuela to be the same as before, where we work with dignity. We earn a decent salary. Our children and grandchildren could study. My daughter, my son, left university because there are no teachers. The government doesn't want kids to study. The government wants us to continue in misery, to be ignored, to not speak out. President Maduro has accused the opposition of starting a coup by disputing the election results and has denied the electoral fraud they accuse him of. 
perverti macabre. This is all directed by a perverse and macabre duo that has to take responsibility. Edmundo Gonzalez and Maria Corina Machado. It's not just criminal because of the violence, but because they look for criminals to attack their own people. Government critics don't want to stop their protest. The fear of what will happen if they do is growing. We are tired. When the vote took place, he had to realize that he lost. The people got tired. Ione Wells reporting from Venezuela. It's 12 minutes to 7, uh, and it is deadline day today for applications to be manager of England's men's football team, taking over from South Ga South Galgate, Gareth Southgate, after he stepped down at the Euros, or Euro Championships. We asked some friends of the Today programme what they might bring to the table. Later, we're going to hear from classicist Mary Beard and comedian Josh Whittakam. But first up, it's Matthew Syed, former international table tennis player, uh, presenter of Sideways on Radio 4 and also Times Columnist. I love this group of players. They're so talented and creative. I think they're brilliantly under Southgate, but the one thing that holds them back, I think, was a bit of fear. Um, maybe that was Southgate wanting to play defensively. They were a bit inhibited. They had the handbrake on. Um, and in a weird kind of a way, as a sports person, I was too defensive. I didn't go for my shots enough. I valued the points too highly. Um, I'm a bit of a coward on the table tennis table, at least I was. So I think as a cautionary tale to the footballers, I might just, on the margins, be able to inspire a bit more attacking football. Matthew Side with his pitch basically to be the next manager of England's football team. Right, a £1.3 billion grant with which the Conservatives had pledged for technology funding has been scrapped. It was around £800 million for a supercomputer, £500 million for computing power to drive artificial intelligence, but it will now not be spent. And it's a scoop which comes to you courtesy of Zoe Kleiman, our technology editor. Zoe, morning. Really interesting story, this. Um, nice little exclusive. Um, it's interesting because Richard Sennett was often accused of being a tech pro as if that's a bad thing, but his argument was that this investment would be massive returns. New government doesn't uh, think so clearly. This was a, uh, a significant amount of money that was committed and, and there's a bit of sort of uh, political gaming going on here, as you can imagine. So uh, the, the, the new government is saying, well, the money was allocated uh, but it was never actually put into any budget. So it's a bit like me promising you £100 million. You know, I haven't got it, you can have it if you want it, but yes. it's not likely to appear anytime soon. Um, the Tories, however, say that uh, DCIT, which is the department that looks after tech and science innovation, ha was looking towards an underspend and so suggesting that the money was in the coffers after all. But, you know, whether or not the money was there, um, the fact is that the tech sector is very valuable to the UK economy. It was valued recently in a report of being worth the one put one trillion dollars um, and in order for tech to function it needs infrastructure just like cars need roads you know tech needs data centers it needs these massive powerful supercomputers um, and there, there is certainly a suggestion that the uk is sort of lagging behind if you like it in that physical infrastructure is a feeling that um basically there is some pressure now with the new government zoe uh to a lot of budget pressure, but basically that their willingness to spend on technology might not be that of the Um they're not saying that. Uh